One, two, three, go! the back and forth. It was really, really revealing. <laughs> Creatively, I've always felt like there's been something missing. I dreamed of being an adventure filmmaker since I was a child, and now I'm actually living that reality, yet I've still been searching for that one project where I can feel like I'm on the right path. I woke up just, just right in it. Like, yeah. where are we going first? We're going to the elementary school, so we're going to go see where they're going to teach a bunch of kids, uh, yeah, some lessons. Then I met Jake. We randomly struck up a conversation at a Sony event, and he told me about his mission called Sone, where he makes films for nonprofits around the world, and he does it completely free. So I asked him, how could I work on the next film? We're about to walk into the school to meet all the kids for the first time, but this isn't like a full-fledged school. It's just to learn some basic skills, and you know, these kids aren't allowed to go to school like a normal school <laughs> hello oh thank you <laughs> the story that brought us to india follows a group of 27 families that live in a landfill in india they have no rights and the government doesn't even recognize them as actual people they're called the untouchables and the organization wings international works with these families and by creating this film together, our aim is to raise enough money to buy these families a piece of land and give them a place where they can start farming so that they could start a new life. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Hey, That's so it's it's kind of basic education. Yes, the children are also not interested in education because they don't know what is school. So, so they don't even have a concept of school. They don't have any Go concept of the school. Go that way. Go that way. Go that way. <laughs> but we are giving them some food. Yeah. And we're telling them you have to learn sanitization, education, then you will have some good reputation in the society. Meet Raja. He grew up in the slums and he comes from the untouchable caste. But he has dedicated his life to breaking the cycle for the next generation. Raja has started both a boys' home and a girls' home in Tanuka to get orphaned kids off the streets. And his next mission is to get these families out of the dump and into a home. So we want to bring them that you are very important to God. You are God's children, God's creation. Look at how beautiful yeah. this is. Yes. The landlord allowed the kids from the dumps to, to get an education here, but a lot of landlords don't want anything to do with these kids. And so fortunately, they've been able to rent this and teach them and just healthy habits to promote their well-being. So one of the key things, you know, shooting the, the piece that we're shooting is that you got to get a sense of the people, you know, hero shots. Hero shots are such an important thing when you're shooting any sort of like documentary. And hero shots are just, they can be used in so many ways. And so Jake's going around, he has a 50 millimeter and he's getting these hero shots, which is just a slow push in. You want to say hi? Hi, no, hi, no. Okay, hi. <laughs> oh, hi. Is that good? Yeah. Our first day in India is all about discovery. With these kind of documentaries, there's so much that we need to figure out as we go. When we arrived, we had no idea who the main characters would be. And so through conversations with Raja and his team, we're able to start putting the pieces together that paint the picture of what life is like. However, we only have four days here, so we have a lot to figure out on this first one. Okay, so we were just filming over at this school and a neighbor nearby has a farm and 
they invited us over to to have some snack. And it would be very disrespectful to not follow up on that snack yeah. offer. Yeah, what we're finding is just in the culture in general here, like everyone has been so friendly and so welcoming that no matter where you're at, whether you're on the plane ride or you're out here in the farms, people are just opening up. Yeah, everyone just like wants to talk to us. And I think we're very unique <laughs> in we this region. Out. I think we're a little like, what are you doing here? So yeah. there's that. Yeah, there's, I wouldn't say this is a touristy area. <laughs> Cut <all>. to this. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, so this treat here is made from the cows that have just given birth, so they only make this from two days after, um, yeah, the first two days after they give birth to a cow, so it's going to be very good. It has like lemon flavor. Is there lemon? No. Tastes like there's lemon in there. That's uh, yogurt. Oh. Not yogurt. Are these your children? It's, it's interesting. Years? It's different. Yeah. It's really good. It's just, it's unexpected. Mm. No. Wait till it lingers in your mouth, then you really taste the fact that it's. We are not like having that milk. age group of people. Oh, it's definitely cow's milk, but it's it's not cow's milk I've ever tasted. Small babies. Yeah. Infants. It's good. Different. Yeah, it's good. If I know nothing about the caste system, because yeah. some people, I asked the last time I was in India, I said, yeah. is the caste system still a thing? And he said, no, 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 it's it's not a thing. And I said, so, so what, like, explain to me the current state of the caste system. No, I just tell you general way, so yeah. that people not be hurt. Yeah. So that in India, we say uh, Brahma is the god of all what the Hindus believe. Yeah. So Brahma means they came from the brain here, you know, so they are the higher caste. Um, from there again, all other castes came. So the untouchables from the feet, so they have to be under the feet. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're all less than the Brahmin. Very much less. As Westerners, this concept of the caste system was hard to grasp at first. In India, you're born into your place in the world. If you're an untouchable, you will always be an untouchable, and you can never rise above in this system. So, turn more towards that way. Would he look this way? No, he would look right off camera this way. Right, so yeah. It'd be like that, and then, you know, lots of hands. And even if we had a second angle from over here. A closer. Yeah, yeah. it can be floating. It's just kind of a nice soft light. I mean, the, the quality of light is solid. It's pretty wild to see all these kids for the first time and their story. It's no longer a concept. It's no longer this idea of a story. It's their real life. Like, we really want to have an understanding of what the problem is and what the solution can be from a cultural perspective of actually being in India and what it actually means you know, for, for them. Like I wanted to know from Raja, is the caste system a thing? I've had some people who live in India say that's not a thing anymore, but to hear him say, no, I'm from the untouchable caste. It's very much a real thing. I live with it and these kids are living with it. And so knowing that and understanding that was important for us as we're going out and setting out to tell this story because if we're gonna tell that story, we have to know that story. And we don't know that as outsiders and as foreigners. So that was really important to like lay that foundation today, day one, to, to know, okay, what is the problem and how do we talk about it with respect? And making a story like this, I think the, the one of the biggest challenges is the unknown of walking into a situation and trying to piece together the story while we're here because we can come up with an idea of what we want for the story, but the reality is now that we're here, we can start to talk to the individuals that are going to become the subjects of this video and figure out where the actual threads are that we want to pull and the kind of story that we want to dig into a little bit deeper. And that's why having this first day where it's more of like the discovery day, we got to see them in their school, but now we're actually headed out to the dump 
where they live. And I think it's a, a good moment for us to be able to just interact with them and like talk to them and kind of see the situation before we we're having to like turn on the cameras and just full on, you know, try to be crafting this story and be just thinking from a filmmaker's perspective because the reality is they are people, they're not like actors. There are gonna be moments that we don't capture, moments of our interaction that are not on camera for you to see and experience because it's important for them to know that we're there with them in person and that we're just spending meaningful human time relating to them and connecting with them. They're not just a story that we're capturing. And so there are moments in between the moments that you're watching that lay the foundation of someone trusting you and giving you access and inviting you into their world uh, with confidence. Come here, come here. walked over to her and she's got her little boy and he's probably a year younger than my little guy and so I started filming with them and I was just really drawn to her and the little boy and I found out that her husband passed away and she has another daughter who's three years old and so just something about her felt like I wanted to tell her story. They go to the trash every morning at 3 a.m. and so we're gonna go out with them and kind of see what that reality is like. <laughs> As soon as we entered the dump, we got stopped. The owner of the dump didn't want us in there with cameras, and we were immediately pushed away. And that's when we realized there's a lot of nuance to this story, because the owner looks the other way when they're collecting bottles, but only in the middle of the night. And so we had to take a step back and rethink how we're going to capture this moment, because it is so important to the story. drove back to the hotel, we saw a celebration in the street. Jake turned to me and said, we need to jump out and film this, but our car already had stopped. The celebration wasn't random, it was here for us. We followed hundreds of locals through the alleyways as they hugged us and held our hands. Every corner was filled with dancing and drum circles. It was hard to take it all in. For me, I was at a low point after seeing the dump, and to follow that with so much joy and celebration was difficult to process. So everyone that's here at this party is from both the boys' home and the girls' home. Right now we're, we're getting into dinner and it's just giant pots of rice and curry and food is just amazing. Anyone else? Oh, here. I think it's, 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 it's time to eat. Alright, so let's talk story. What's hard about this stuff is that when you're there, it feels so normal, even though it's so abnormal. And everyone was very like happy and like- There was no like- Lots of smiles. There was not like depression energy no. when we got there. I was like, wow, this is a kind of fun little thoroughfare. It's obviously the conditions are incredibly bad. I mean, looking at the flies. Yeah. And just the flies on everything. Yeah, it's, I don't know. There's like a crazy resiliency Either it's resiliency or it's just 
desensitization. Like it's just, this is it? Like you can't... I mean, it, it, in the opposite extreme, if you just grow up in crazy opulence, you assume everybody has an elevator in their house. So I think act one is the problem. How do we establish the problem? The problem is there's people living in trash dumps. Yeah. And we show that through the eyes of this one woman. Through her. Normally act two would be, okay, what are we doing about it? Mm -hmm. But I think act two needs to be a little bit longer in her world. And the tricky thing is, is that act two still being in her world is still the problem because she's not out of it yet. So normally what... you said there would be some semblance of like, I used to be there and now I'm here Yeah. and here's where we're going in the future. Right now, all we have is this is where I am and this is what we're trying to do. We're going to need to pull Raja in in act two. Yeah. Getting his story. Act two could be the sort of connection of Raja with the people living there. So maybe we need to discover from Raja, like, how did you discover these people? Well, and Raja also told us today that he come, came from he comes, being an untouchable. He, yeah, he's, that's his cast. Yeah. That even though he's a well-respected person in the community, he's still an untouchable. What happens when you are just given a reality where you're rejected? So but the question Raja is, didn't take that reality, so he kind of rose above it. Structure. But he is trying to do something to at least give people a different future than living in a trash dump. Right. For act two, is it that we get into Raja and kind of how he's stepped above being an untouchable while still, you know, it's going into the, the issue of the caste system here and all that. Like it almost, I almost see it's, you know, him and like the work he does, how it is impacting these people. He brought us here to try and expand what they're doing so they can actually buy a piece of land. And that's act three. So the solution the is, get them out of this situation and help them harvest their own crops. It's almost like we need to do the interview with Raja yeah. and we need to do the interview with, with her, the girl. But depending on what comes out of these interviews, is that leaving too much up to chance? I don't want to write a story for a woman who we haven't had a meaningful conversation with yet. Yeah, we haven't sat down. I mean, we've talked to her today, yeah. but like very little. But really, she just played along. She was like, she okay, just, if you guys want to film with me. Yeah, she gave us a lot of good B-roll. Yeah, I think her story just all you got to say is single mother of two children living in a trash dump. That's pretty much all you need for someone to go, where do I write a check? At least that's what you would hope. Our job is show that in a meaningful, respectful way that helps people connect with her and connect with the reality that she's going through. And so there doesn't need to be a lot of explaining. There doesn't need to be a lot of talking, frankly. There just needs to be a significant amount of human connection. So today we're doing the main interview with Raja and um, you know it's an important interview to get and we thought that this space was going to be where we would do the interview but coming in today the lighting just doesn't look the same and it doesn't have the same impact before it. It felt warm and it felt a little bit different, but now it's just very uninspiring, just not the best look, so. What's your thoughts on the interview? In there? It's, it's not the vibe. It's not the vibe? Yeah, we gotta go find something new. I think we go and we make it a more natural environment and we just find something that's pretty right now instead of trying to force what was pretty last night. So down one. Yeah. Oh. Get in the grid?
it's like perfectly clean audio out here. Don't hear a lot of the city. You don't hear a lot of anything, just some birds and the trees blowing in the wind. But we want this interview to have that kind of look, not just like caught like man on the street, but to do that, we need to find a good background and we need some decent lighting. And what we're looking for is some shade, because ultimately having some shade with some texture behind will give us some nice natural light coming in from the sides. And that's gonna give us a good look for Raja rather than being in like direct sunlight where it's super bright. The sun is very disgusting right now, as you can tell on my face. It's pretty overhead. And um, so we found a little structure over here that apparently is a government building. And I was like, can we go over there? And Raja was like, sure, let's go over there. So we're gonna go see if they'll let us film there. You can see behind me, it's just, it's the power station. So we got the shaded spot. And you can see as soon as you get out of that sun, like look how harsh that is. But as soon as you get in the shade with the sun coming in from the sides, it just has such Much a better, better look. Much better look. Yeah. Let's find the shot though. So I actually I like love that. that. The texture of that. Yeah, that's better. And even the bikes, we can move. But I think the bikes are kind of cool. I just think that pointed that way where you could see some of the gate and you could see the, the foliage of the palm. So Raja, why don't we put one chair right here? We'll just slide these bikes out of the way. And then we can move these bikes maybe just that way a little bit. Yeah. So accommodating, like in the US, we would have been stopped at the gate and been like, you don't have permits to be here. We come in and we're like, can we film here? They're like, how many chairs do you need? <laughs> I am Raja Kumar Unduti from India. I'm working with Wings International. This is a story of two heroes. Story of a hero who's lived it and overcome it. Hero who's about to overcome it. Yeah, like he's bringing the next generation She's up. bringing the next generation up and she and her children are that next generation. The second act is the merger of the two worlds. I'd say that was a pretty solid interview. Very solid. I'm like so impressed with him as a person. He's got such an incredible story. He's, and, uh, he's the best version of what humanity looks like yeah. in, in flesh. He just told us his whole story, coming from the slums and basically going and getting an education and then coming back and helping others to try and change the cycle where people just live in this trash. He's trying to elevate them above it. What you're gonna want to get is some vitamin C enriched apple juice. It, I was surprised because I haven't had a box of apple juice in a very, very long time. But I had one yesterday. I was like, this is a great afternoon pick me up. Seems to be the go to. We keep getting handed these everywhere we go. This one is enriched with vitamin C. The one yesterday was like, it had like a chemical makeup on it and said it was an electrolyte rich. The marketing was incredible. Oh, it's amazing. Right after Raja's interview, we had a clear direction and we could see the entire film. But there were still two essential elements that we needed. The first is a Payama's interview, because we need to be able to tell her story. And the second is all the B-roll we need to be able to support that of her actually in the dump collecting trash. What does he think about the dog? I told you, take a stick with you, they will come. We're grabbing sticks because there's dogs that are guarding guarding the pigs over here and I was just over there filming and a couple of them looked at me and started growling and I took off because I was pretty nervous about them coming after me but this is the only way for us to get into the dump because the county has cameras on the other side and they don't want us showing this. Yeah be careful with all this glass. Don't want to slip and fall. Also don't want to get a Doberman to pop up here. Uh, is that her? Do you have a long enough lens to grab yeah. that? She's right there. I see her. She's in here. I'll find Ma. Okay. Ma. Hello. Couldn't get any shots. Oh, wait, wait. There's yeah. Someone. It's not totally acceptable what we're doing. They're not entirely happy with us. Yeah, they don't want us to be filming here. <laughs> so now we're going right back to where we basically just got kicked out of because apparently she's going to meet us there. We're going to get the shot which is an incredibly important shot of her in this environment collecting trash. So ideally we're trying to get this shot with some of the sunset in the background just because it looks so beautiful with this light right now. My biggest concern is for her. I mean, this is yeah, her. This is her life. This is her life. I don't want her to get in trouble because we're trying to, granted the purpose of the film is 
really intended for her and her community, but I just don't want to compromise her livelihood. They will have some confusion. Yeah, because they don't understand why we want to go yeah. inside. Yeah, <laughs> why do why we want Did to go? Did you try to go over there? First? We walked over there yeah, yesterday. Yeah, we went once. We're going to walk and inside. You, you call us. What do you say? I just feel like this has become so complicated. We could have just walked into this area with her, but there's been so much confusion. Like she was in the dump and then we were out here and then we tried to coordinate. And now I just feel like we spent the last hour as the most valuable time of day is fleeting and we don't have anything. And so I'm wondering if we just need to accept the fact that this is not when we're gonna get the shot of her collecting and come back a different day. There's just been a big mix up in terms of communication, so. <sighs> Which is expected. It's expected. We're really not supposed to be here filming. Yeah. But uh, I feel like we've been lying the entire way to get my visa, <laughs> to get, you know. To get into the country. People asking us on the plane what we're doing here. It's just like, I don't know. It's just felt like we've had to play this cover-up game. It's kind yeah. of exhausting. I just want to be like, we're making a film about people that need to get into a home because they live in a trash dump. But we can't say that. But we can't say that because of a number of reasons. Right as we were walking out of the dump, a local filmmaker showed up with a drone. As foreigners, we can't bring drones into India. At least that's what we were reading before we flew over. We should probably go over there, right? You, no, does it matter? Uh, don't go there because uh, they are waiting there. So come so one, there. Let's go down near the yeah, end. Down here. That's you guys mind coming yeah. down this way? So instead of trying to get our drone through customs, we just asked Raja if he knew anyone with a drone, and he was able to connect us to someone, but they're only available right now. So I scrambled to get the drone up and get a few shots because we only had about 10 minutes left of light. chaos with the drone and everything my camera tipped over and uh, shattered my black pro mist it's just uh, it's unfortunate because we've been shooting everything with these mist filters to give it that just that quality where it feels like you know all the lights are blooming and it's really working for what we're filming here and so to, to have this break like halfway through the shoot is pretty tough I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to use it, but it's just, we can't get other gear. Like, we just can't, so. If you break it, well, it's done. We're in an interesting predicament. It's the uh, start of day three. The sun is just coming up over the horizon over there. I'm up on the roof, kind of just watching the daily life of India just pass by. But for telling the story, yesterday was good, but it was also like, we didn't get everything that we needed. We got the main interview with Raja. That was like one of the key things that we had to get to tell the story. But there's also the story of Apayama. The issue is there was just so much confusion and we were losing light and we just, we lost our opportunity to get those two key things that we need to tell this story. We essentially have one more day to get everything that we need to finish this documentary, but kind of cutting it close because we were hoping to get those two key elements yesterday so that today we could focus more on just the glue that holds everything together, just more B-roll and just a few more little scenes that will help tie the whole story, make it complete. One of the big things is we don't want to get a Paima in trouble, like filming in the dump, because that is her livelihood. And then on top of that, we don't know if there's any cultural issues or if like something happened because it's just, it, there was a lot of interesting moments yesterday where we just, there was a miscommunication and we just felt like that they didn't want us there. So really it's, you know, coming down to the wire where we have to get these essential elements today to tell the story. Hello, it's Jake. How do you feel about this? Hello. About what's currently going on? I feel like there's a serious lack of communication going on. <laughs> communication barrier of some sort going on. 
lack of communication builds imaginary walls. Yeah. So this morning, what we're supposed to be doing is driving down to a beach. We're going with all the kids, basically for most of the day to go to the beach. We're gonna capture that a little bit for the story, but it's just gonna take most of our day. Uh, and unfortunately, like, you know, we're gonna be back hopefully for sunset to grab those last two shots. But this is just such a mess because we've uh, we've just been sitting here on the side of the road for half hour. No idea what's going on. Big lack of communication. You guys ready? You ready? This is complete chaos. Absolute chaos. Good news is, Paima is here, our main character, so we're gonna actually get usable footage for the film. This is nuts. You wanna talk about sticking out like a sore thumb? So we went to the beach and we found out that it's actually a Hindu festival. So we're right in the middle of absolute chaos, but it's kind of great. Everybody wants to talk. Where are you from? I was like, I'm from US. He was like, I don't believe you. I was like, okay. I think this is super overwhelming because every time we stop, just a big crowd forms. Everyone wants to take a photo with us. And, uh, it's a, it's a little much. And we're trying to say no out of like the desire to mitigate the amount of people that then go, oh, let's all take photos. So you feel bad, but you're like, sorry. And then there's certain people that are like really pushy, like, no, take a photo with me. Yeah, it's, uh, you definitely have to say no just because the more people that crowd, the bigger the crowd kind of starts accumulating. And it's, uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've just started moving to try and get out of just circling up, trying to find some open space. After about 30 minutes walking through the crowd, we found a patch of beach that was less crowded. The kids ran into the ocean and we filmed some footage on the 85 millimeter that we might use for the edit. Overall, it feels like we lost a day of filming. However, when we walked back away from the beach, there was this really pretty light filtering through the palm trees. So we grabbed a bunch of the kids, did some shots of them running through the forest. And just as the sun was setting through the trees, we grabbed Raja, we were able to capture some essential hero shots with the perfect ray of light coming through. After all this chaos, it's been like, we finally got some good footage. Look at this sky behind us. Look how sweaty I am. Beautiful. <laughs> Drenched. Running yeah, through the it started as like a very much a, a bust day. Like the day was a bust. And then yeah. we watched like, some of the best shots of the whole trip. I think so. It was worth it to come out here. But now we're we're still missing the kind of like key parts of the story. But tomorrow morning. We worked, we worked on her. I had lunch with her and I sat next to her and we had some rice together. So I feel like... We can get the interview? We can get the interview. It's uh, raining this morning. Final day. Final day. I feel like everything has been like pushing us away from getting this like key interview. <laughs> it's so and, true. And like key moment, the main interview with a Payama and seeing her actually in, in the, the dump. dump. Yeah. It's like those two things are so elusive. And it's like there's just these barriers that keep showing up <laughs> while we're trying to capture that. So today it's not supposed to be raining, it's raining. And uh, Raja is supposed to meet us here at 6 a.m. It's 6.15. If you want to sit in front, no problem. I found out that the reason that she felt uncomfortable is because the elders in the community thought we were journalists. They thought we were just coming to expose their living conditions. And then when they found out that we were here to tell a story to try and help change the circumstances, they sort of signed off on us being here, so now she's not uncomfortable being on camera with us. So that's that's cool to know the backstory. 
It seems like everything just came together at the last minute. The rain stopped, and with permission from the community elders, we snuck to the far side of the dump and began filming the key sequence to tell Payama's story. That was worth all the back and forth. It was really, really revealing. From here, Apayama brought us into her home, and we sat down to film her interview and tell her story on camera. I want her to know that we came all the way across the world because she's important and her story is important. As we drove away from the community, I was thinking about a memory from back in college. A couple of documentary filmmakers came to speak about a film they had just finished that took them on this wild adventure, but more importantly, it shed light on an important topic. And listening to the story, I had told myself that I wanted to do that someday. And as we were in the car driving away from this community, I realized that we are those filmmakers. And creatively, this is what I've been missing. It's not only about making films and going on adventures, but it's being able to use our gift of being storytellers to shed light on important topics and potentially change the world for the better. Check, 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 check. We got a film. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. We were just here in this airport five days ago. Packed a lot into four days on the ground. So we're gonna watch the film that we made right now, like in about a minute. But before that, if this is something that you want to do as a filmmaker, you want to go on these trips, you can through so. Yeah, the whole idea is that as storytellers, as filmmakers, we have the ability to change people's perception of the world and move them to action. And so my mission is to connect filmmakers with nonprofits around the globe. So if you're a filmmaker who wants to be sent on an assignment like the one you just watched, reach out and apply because it'll be a trip either with me, with Jevin, uh, or by yourself with a small team of filmmakers to go do this and to try and create as much change as we possibly can with our camera and with storytelling. I'll put a link down below in the description to where you can apply to go on one of these adventures and tell one of these stories and hopefully create some change around the world. But without further ado, let's roll the tape. <laughs> let's watch this film.
తనకండి నా పేరు అప్పాయి అమ్మ తర్వాత కంపోజ్ పక్కన ఉందండి చిన్నప్పుడే పిల్లవాడు పుర్తిలో అప్పుడే చచ్చిపోయాడండి మా ఆయన ఇంకా అక్కడ నుంచి నేనే పెంచుకుంటున్నానండి పిల్లవాడిని పిల్లని కానీ పిల్లోడిని కానీ నేనే పెంచుకుంటున్నాను Raja Kumar Undutti I was born in Islam I had gone through so much struggles In India we are from the caste called Dalit and untouchables Untouchable means nobody would shake hand with them Nobody say hi to them they are not even recognized as a human there is no one to wish them no one to say hello no one to hold their hands and no one to give food so they are totally untouchables kakka nunchi devudu meda aadhar padutundi ippudu varike aithe nam pillaku naake ek ishtam raaledani anta devudu chusukuntadu తర్వాత ఉండగా ఉండగా నా బతుకు నా బతుకు అలా ఉండదు తెలియదండి ఇదేనండి నా బాధ బాధగానే ఉంటుందండి చాలా చాలా చెప్పాలని అంత బాధగానే ఉంటుందండి ఇక బాధగానే ఉంటుందండి తప్పదండి భరించాలి కదా బతుకున్నాను చూసి from my experience from my childhood i waited someone to say i love you i waited someone to hug me i waited someone to smile at me say call my name saying that hey rajya how are you but since i got the education and i understand the importance of purpose of my life so i am able to realize that i am born in this world with a purpose with by god so i want to see these people also in the future they would get educated and they would become like me in the future and they would help others also do the same and their generous will be changed eraga eragunde chadukoni eraga man maru jangata ay tisukochukunte chaala baa untadu they are trash collectors the parents but let not the children do the same so let the children be educated they have a good future we just want to give them some a good shelter where 15 to 20 families would have a own houses their own kitchen their own bedroom to help them that they are valuable that they are not supposed to live like their parents used to live so when we bring them to a new houses then their mentality their future seeing that may change and they'll be no more uh, called as a trash people or dumpy at people so we want to help them to realize the purpose of their birth in this world
Thanks for watching the film. Hope you guys liked it. If you were moved by that in any way uh, financially and you want to help be a part of getting a Paima and her community out of the trash dumps and into a home, uh, the nonprofit that we worked with, Wings International, is creating a donation page specifically to this project. Let's band together. Let's do this. Let's let's be a meaningful part of their story financially, and let's do it quick. Let's make it happen um, faster than any of us could imagine, so that way we could get this project underway, and then that way we can go back in a year's time and celebrate with this community as they get the keys to their new little apartments and get to experience a brand new reality. And if you're a filmmaker and you want to tackle one of these stories, then I'll put a link down below in the description to where you can apply on the Sewn website to be a filmmaker and be a storyteller and hopefully create an impact around the world.